Okay, I hope the uh, sound is okay for this one. Now, uh, this is a continuation of the project finance model. Where we left off is we made a new project finance page, and it had a uh, uh, we have the uh, commercial operation date here. Okay. We don't really have every, anything else now. And we brought some variables. And oh, here's what I was going to say, of course, is that then we switch from a monthly model to a semi-annual model, which is convenient. You can do this a couple of, of different ways, but, you know, the debt will get paid on a semi-annual basis, so the interest expense will be really accurate here. Suppose, you know, you could uh, put working capital in between or something, but, but this is, a, I think, a reasonable way to do it. And uh, now what we're going to do is really start our project finance model. Now, some, let's go through some of the key issues here. Is I, 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 this one, we're going to keep the debt very simple. I think there are three ways to, to model a debt. One will be just to input the debt. Another one will be to drive it by DSCRs. And another one will be drive it by debt to capital or debt to project cost ratios. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll just lay out the model and, and, and use a simple, uh, a simple approach. We'll work through the uh, inputs. And I don't know if I have anything dramatic to say. Well, I, I, I guess it is. If you look at this from a big perspective, the biggest solar power is a big deal in the whole world. I hope we all agree on that. And to make solar power economic, uh, to make it economic, we need one of the biggest drivers, perhaps the enormous biggest driver other than maybe the capacity factor that we worked on is the cost of capital because it's such a capital intensive endeavor it's maybe the most capital intensive thing or one of the most capital intensive things you could find on earth there's that means there's all the costs are really capital we don't really have much o and m costs here relative to the capital costs so let's put our senior debt now, for the senior debt, let's start with the uh, debt balance. Now, there will be three options. One, fixed debt. And then we'll uh, put the... Uh, why don't we put the, the, the uh, debt-driven by debt to project cost. Okay. And, and let, this is uh, just going to be USD thousands. This is going to be a uh, percentage. And uh, then we have the uh, debt driven by DSCR, and that's going to be times. So let's say that we can get the banks to agree on a 1.2 times DSCR, 80%, and uh, I don't know what's our project cost. We haven't really done yet. Have we done that? Yeah, we've got 66,000, so let's say it's uh, 50,000, okay? And then we'll maybe we'll put amount and then apply. So let's put true here and false and false. And there's a, I, I can't think of a way to kind of automatically uh, 
Okay, so that's our, uh, our debt balance. Now, once we figure out the amount of debt, let's put debt uh, uh, funding. That's, and we can put pro rata, or we could put, we could put uh, equity first. We could, and we could invent all sorts of other things, but this is, let's just put switch. Oops, yeah, that's the right. And we'll put uh, true, and we'll put uh, uh, not true. Now, what we need to do is uh, we can, don't need to. I guess I don't have the generic macros open. Oh no! So we better open the generic uh, macros file. Okay, and uh, let's. Uh, excuse me. Of course, we go to folder number twenty-one. We simply open the generic uh, macros file. Control tab, shift control C, and oops, we have that. Now, when you have uh, uh, one of these, of course, not of course, I keep saying of course, stop that. Now, uh, we could put a, a little, uh, okay. This is, uh, how about pro rata? So if we only have two options, this is pretty easy. Now, when you go to format control, as usual, we go to one page, back to this page, and we click on the true, okay? So we can, uh, we can uh, have a flexible that. The only other real issue is capitalize interest or pay interest. This is during the construction. Now, I, I think what I'm going to do is we'll apply, we'll apply the... Uh, Uh, we're, we're going to apply the same thing to fees as interest, okay? I suppose if you you got really fancy, uh, you could uh, you could capitalize different ones. Now we we can just I suppose uh, copy all of this. Now if you right click on this, you can try to be lazy and. Uh, click on 5058 uh, and we can put uh, uh, capitalize interest. Okay. Same thing as before. So this defines, you've defined how much the debt is, how you're going to borrow it, and I hope you're thinking, oh, well, if we're a bank, we care about the repayment. So let's put debt repayment. Now, to put the debt repayment, this time, well, let's do the same thing. Let's just really concentrate on two extreme cases, either uh, equal installment. Uh, excuse me, I'm going to have to pause for just a minute. Okay, so now uh, put, let's put sculpting. Uh, I'm sorry, you have to watch me uh, tighten my horrible spelling. Okay. And let's try it one more. Everything's fine. We right click 
we say this we change this to uh, 162 and we type this as equal now one of the most important things then is to put the debt tenor and uh, this let's put this in years and let's put debt tenor uh, from COD we have to be careful you could define it from the commercial uh, from the financial close so let's say we put uh, let's uh, say we have 22 years this is maybe the, one of the extremely important variables it drives the DSCR LLCR it's a, a very crucial variable now then uh, once we have that we could put the uh, debt repaid date okay now and this is a date so we should do the same thing e date as we did yesterday or what not yesterday whenever we started this we use the uh, we start at the um, commercial operation and then we go to the years and multiply it by 12 because they're 12 months in a year so that's our that's when we've fully repaid okay um, and uh, you know you, you know uh, uh, these structuring variables I, I really didn't put some of the the spinner boxes in but I think we should uh, okay put some, some of these in and then the, uh, let's start let's say the minimum is one which is ridiculous but okay it could be and then we put the maximum of 30 or something like that which is probably you know too high and then we we can uh, put this in okay of course we should push this up to where we were that defines the debt repayment now in between the time where this fixed debt amount will be issued and then repaid we better pay some interest and fees okay now uh when we when we why don't we start with the fees let's put uh, 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 let's put the upfront fee now there are these there are a whole lot more fees than just these two but uh, we'll put one percent okay and the uh, and let's put the, the commitment fee which you pay on the uh, let's put annual we have to be careful here because this is paid on a periodic basis unlike the upfront fee which is only paid on the uh, uh, single basis these fees are painful painful things and now let's put some uh, uh, let's be a little bit careful let's put some hedging now for the hedging percent let's assume that we get some different uh, uh, okay let's start with uh, year let's put a year here. now when it's the construction period we'll just call it year and now I don't know what we should. let's say it's 70% yeah, it's it might be a lot different it might be 100% and let's go to your five and let's say it goes to 60% and 
and 10 it goes to 50 percent and 15 years on it goes to 40 percent something like that now uh, okay now let's then let's put uh, base rate let's say it's LIBOR okay now we can put different years here so let's say it's let's say one three five seven ten fifteen and let's say that you know people are all saying well the interest rate so let's put a spot interest rate okay um and let's here why don't we do this i am going to uh, uh and i'm going to pause for just a minute and we're going to find the file that has all the data on the interest rates so just just a minute okay i just practiced that a little bit so what you want to do is go to the uh, disc <laughs> you know i hope you uh order the disc because then i get your email and if i get your email i'm going to send you about one email or two two a year maybe two a year just telling you when i give some courses is that that bad i hope that's not badgering you and you can say no 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 just just send, send me the google drive don't give me any of this shit so um if you go go to chapter one and then go to data retrieval what i left is a file called interest rates now if you look at this interest rates i'm not going to go through this don't worry i'm not going to waste your time with my downloading things that i love so much but this just has some uh, data remember from the st louis fed up here that's where it comes from and you can get all the series or one the series and and let's just so uh, uh here's where we collected it and now a lot of these series aren't available for ancient history and you can see what's happened here now if you want to look at just one one file let's just look at the one year swap rate you know maybe there was a three month swap rate i should have gotten as well but that's uh something like under one percent let's put 0.3 percent now uh, if you wanted to really uh, look at a forecast for what's this, what's happening, actually you can go to this EIA website. They have some uh, uh, objective forecasts. If you, objective, they're just they're not objective probably at all, but they're they're available to you. Okay, um, uh, I'm not going to open that right now. I'm just going to assume something. So uh, what we do is go back uh, to this one so maybe 0.3 percent and maybe you get to year one and it's still 0.3 percent maybe 0.5 percent maybe 1.5 percent maybe 2.2 2 percent 2.5 percent and 2.7 percent so of course uh, uh, we could look at other things and then we can put the uh, hedged interest rate now this is where you really want to see how long the hedge is if we have a 22 year life year year uh, 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 tenor maybe the average life something like 10 years or a little more or less than 10 years and that's what you'd use this this to figure out what you'd hedge so then we could look at a uh, 30 or a, a rather a 10 year swap rate and you can see it's higher now if you wanted to graph two series together you could uh, first put uh, the 10 year swap rate and then oh shit and then the one year one swap rate and i have to fix this oh crap there's some missing data in the uh, 10 year swap rate that I fixed here. 
Okay, I'm not going to waste your time. I'm not going to fix it right now. What I am going to do, on the other hand, there was some uh, uh, missing data. That's what caused that problem. I will fix that eventually. Now I'm going to save this and then clear the sheets. Now if you clear the sheets, uh, it, it gives you all the references and it just cleared every sheet. And then you click this one that says get all the series. And then it goes to the series and gets them. So what I'm going to uh, do, hopefully, well maybe it's going faster than I, I thought. Um, that gets all that just updates all the series to you for you you know and uh, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna turn off the, the uh, 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 thing and I'm gonna fix that last thing okay yeah, I'm gonna fix that uh, you, you know what I meant uh, okay I just uh, fixed this okay and uh, uh, that's how it works. So that's the, now you can see what the uh, one year swap rate or the short term kind of interest rate or the long term interest rate. Short term interest rate hasn't been higher than the long term interest rate uh, since t the year 2000 for 15 years. Interesting. So, all right. So that's why you don't really, it's, it's, it hurts to hedge everything because it makes it uh, really expensive so the hedged interest rate what was that oh great that was about uh, uh, why why can't I see that oh come on why can't I see this oh this sucks. What a waste of your time. Oh, come on. Okay. <laughs> God. Okay. All right. Well, this is this line is two percent. So let's make it. Uh, Let's make it about, it, uh, see it came down, let's make about 2.1%. It's a good time to uh, hedge everything, huh? Okay. Now I've seen people who've made this rate change over time. Uh, so I guess you could hedge just from year five to year seven or something like that. You could do all kind of fancy things, but we'll, we'll leave it now. All right, now let's deal with the credit spread. And, and that's going to be the same kind of thing. Now we will put, this will be the construction period. Year, so let's put the credit spread year here first. And um, after we put the credit spread year, let's put the credit spread maybe. Now, if you really want to be a kind of academic about this, what you could do is look at a triple B credit spread, because really that's the kind of, uh, let's look at a triple B versus a double B. So, you know, oh, shit. Okay, now, oh, fuck. Uh, just a minute, just a damn minutes okay uh, okay this is the that's the triple b yield oh shit no wonder i okay let's put the triple b adjusted credit spread okay uh, credit spread Triple B adjusted spread. And then let's do double B adjusted spread. So this is where we kind of have somewhere around 2%. Look at that. It's kind of uh, up to 2%. 
I think for project finance and then it, it was down at one and a half percent uh, you know where this this uh, double B is that one let's look at a single B it's not kind of as dramatic as I had hoped but or thought but this is five percent versus maybe two percent so it's a pretty big difference of course in the financial crisis you had the dramatic things and this was in another uh, recession okay so let's use uh, let's use uh, I guess we're gonna have to use two percent I can't I can't make this into 1.5 percent okay uh, so a actually why don't we make it 1.5 percent during the construction period assuming there's some sort of construction support or guarantee how about let's put two two point two five percent and two point five percent there's uh, how about we'll even put two point first seven five percent this is this is this enormous issue for me this is encourage you to refinance i'm gonna i'm gonna leave it like this okay but but uh, uh when they put those kind of credit spreads in and give you this strong incentive to refinance, your base case should have refinancing in it. Uh, and it certainly shouldn't have the really increased spreads in there, but we can, uh, I'm, I, I, I better stop with this. So I think we have enough. We have the hedging percent, we have the interest rate, we have the credit spread. So now we... Uh, we have the fees, and the final thing is we could put some kind of credit enhancements. Now, for the credit enhancements, let's first put the most painful thing of all in, which is the debt service reserve account. And we can put that in months. Now, that months are not the same as period. Let's say it's six months, which is one period in our model. Now, we'll put L... C for DSRA. That means, uh, you know, you know. Why I say you know? That's a, a really bad habit I have. I noticed that. Uh, when the we'll put that as false here first, and as usual, we are. Uh, oh come on. This is uh, 184. Okay. And then LC for DSRA. So this, what this means is that you don't have to have any cash in it. Uh, you have to pay a fee. Now, if we pay a fee, we'd have a L c fee and let's say that that's a percent and that might be 0.5 percent okay that's not going to be very much and then we'll have a and this lc fee if it's somehow indirectly or directly guaranteed by somebody else it's not reflecting the true cost of the project so uh, uh, and then let's put our interest income rate which the you know the banks you know again i said the banks might say is about zero but let's put a 0.3 percent now that silly little uh, uh that service that silly little interest income rate can drive you completely crazy when you're computing the dsra and then we can put a dividend lockup uh, uh, that means that whenever DSCR, let's say, gets below 1.1, we can't pay a dividend. And then we can put a, uh, finally, a cash sweep percent. And let's, let's put that as a percent. And let's put that as 0%. Okay, that says uh, we'll... 
uh, it wouldn't really apply in a solar model very much, but that would say if you have a really good year, we're going to take your, we're not going to allow your dividend. This says if you've got a really bad year, we're not going to allow your dividend. There might be some redundancy in these uh, in these in these things. Okay, so now we've got some things. Now the only other thing we might include here, in addition to the senior debt, we might have an equity uh, loan, and I'll just leave that blank for now. We'll add that uh, later now later on. Now when we go to the project finance. Let's just set this up first, okay? Now to set this up, this is the key thing. Uh, we 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 need to get totals from here, and we're going to use the total senior debt funding and equity funding for a whole bunch of the um, uh, for for the analysis. And I'm going to split the senior debt funding. Let's put senior debt funded uh, with cash and uh, let's put uh, senior debt capitalized interest okay and we can then put total senior debt now computing this is going to be the biggest uh, issue really in the in the model almost but for now we're just going to take uh, this top one and eventually we're going to have all sorts of other calculations and we we can't fit finish this yet but uh, uh, let's let's begin now if you look at uh, if you look at this up here we have all the sources of funds we're almost going to copy the same type of thing. Okay, and uh, let's copy. It's not going to be exactly, exactly, exactly the same. We'll show you why in just a minute. But let's let's start with um, we 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 have these uh, categories. The first category will be uh, uh, funding during construction and underneath the funding during put let's put funding cash funding needs that's what we this is all our actual costs and then we have to figure out how we're going to uh, how we're going to pay some of those costs some of these are going to be really tricky you know, but I, I, I think uh, for now we'll just we'll just keep them um, we'll just keep them relatively simple. EPC capital expenditures, hopefully. Where did I have the development cost? Oh, this was development cost. Excuse me, this was the. the owners and then we have some working capital we have to finance so why don't we put uh, let's put the initial working capital Le let's leave out these and these those are all related to, um, to the debt itself and create this this mess we we get but then we'll put the total funding now after we have the funding let's we're going to see where we get the money from and then so under cash funding financing uh, funding needs and let's start with the pro rata Rather funding and we can put percent of uh, uh, how about we'll put base for funding now that might not include the development cost for example 
we might have to uh in fact what we we would cut we how about we'll uh let's put okay i'm i'm uh just just let me think about this for a minute okay it seems that every time i do things i do them a little bit differently this is the amount we actually paid and then what we can do is add a couple of lines uh, adjustments for debt uh, funding base because what what the debt might allow, allow is we'll put uh, 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 total development costs okay uh, less development cost funded and then we're going to add the development cost costs uh, uh, allowed and what we'll what we'll do is accumulate all the development costs uh later on. whoops oh come on and then uh and then we we uh and then we 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 uh, add the development fees so we can see explicitly just kind of what adjustments are made and then we can put total adjustments and once we have the total adjustments we can uh, put the the uh, adjust uh, a funding base for debt okay and um, okay and I guess we'll we'll do this in in a simple way right now and then percentage of uh, percentage in period and then we can have debt funding you know and then what I'm gonna do I keep saying you know and then we can put equity funding okay which is uh, equity funding is kind of the balance now after that we'll put uh, equity first funding and I'm gonna defer this equity first funding until a second uh, video once we have the uh, equity funding well at some point we'll have equity debt funding equity funding actually first and then we'll have debt funding and then we can have funding applied And on this one, let's let's you know put a pro rata and get our our assumption. And we put the uh, uh, first one in, and now we'll put our second one in. Now, once we have the debt funding in, we can. It really this defines the sources and uses. At least this is kind of the first cut at the sources and uses funds. And then we can put construction debt. Now for the construction debt, let's put the opening balance. And then let's add the capitalized interest. Okay, which we, we can put we can put another switch okay and we'll we'll go back and uh, get our capitalized interest switch and then we can add the uh, add the uh, uh, debt funded now funding applied and uh, whoops debt funded 
then I think we should also put equity funding applied. And we can, uh, this is the same. Okay, and then we can put closing balance. And then, now, and after we put the closing balance in, then let's, we're going to begin getting the fees and the interest during construction. So let's put the interest during construction. Now, this is going to have a series of things. Let's first put the hedging percent. Now, before we do this, we need to uh, also get the year, because up here we have up we ha up here we have the uh, uh, construction con construction, and then and then we can put the uh, uh, short term right. fixed rate and we can put the annual rate applied and finally we'll put the credit spread and, f and then and then the total annual rate and the periodic rate okay and uh, that periodic rate will, of course, be higher during the semi-annual period than during the annual period. And finally, then we'll have the interest during construction. And we'll have to decide an interest capitalized and then interest paid. And I just decided uh, what I'm going to do. I'm going to just have called this whole video the structuring video it's just taking too long and it's it's just too boring now we can put the upfront fees and and we can do the same thing well and now let's put commitment let's put the undrawn hmm, debt commitment less the drawn an undrawn debt and then we'll put the uh, commitment fees and then we can put the total fees during construction and then, then uh, after we put the interest during construction total fees during construction let's put fees capitalized and then fees for paid during construction okay and uh, then we're finished really with our construction period okay that's the uh, uh, that's the first stage now once we have the construction uh, defined let's put permanent debt now the, many of the model models permanent that I probably spelled it wrong much many of the models you you have um, would put the construction debt and the permanent debt together. Look at me going up and down. What an irritating kind of thing to do. And that, that, but this one, the reason there's a, there are a few reasons to split it up. First, the it, it just is a kind of cleaner from a structuring standpoint. Secondly, if you do this, it can avoid some of the crucial. There's a little tiny trick that avoids a whole bunch of the circular references so once we have the permanent debt let's first put the repayment now 
what we'll do here again to just get this put repay how about level repayment which is pretty easy to compute and then let's put sculpted now to compute the sculpted repayment we first need our cfads then which is consists of our EBITDA uh, less the taxes uh, plus the 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 um, interest income um, less the working capital changes uh, plus the um, hmm, you know if it, it uh, how about we could have less the deposits to MRA add withdrawals from demo from the MRA and then we can get total CFADS then we once we have the CFADS then we can get the the, the uh, DSCR applied and then we can get our target debt service we can take away the interest expense and then we'll get the repayment now we have the sculpted repaint we have the level repayment here which is just we'll put the tenor here we're going to put, we're going to need to to put in the, the uh, uh, debt repayment switch now once you have the sculpted repayment then as usual we'll put the um, you know we might change this around a little bit that's okay applied re repayment now, once you have the replayment of pi, then we can put permanent debt schedule. And put the opening balance. Add the draws uh, at COD or at, at, uh, at month prior. To COD less the repayments, which we have just above here, that's in this one. Uh, uh. Okay. Okay. That's where we put the, the uh, test in. And then we put the closing balance. Now the nice thing about this is we'll have an interest rate that we already computed and then we can put our interest expense. Okay, now once we have that, then we can compute the DSRA. Now I'm gonna leave that blank for now. We're not gonna put that in. And we can put sculpting and everything else. And then we can finally put in the uh, profit and loss statement and the cash flow after COD. And really, we'll be able to get all our key statistics then. Once we have that, the very last line of this will be the dividends now the we compare the dividends to the equity funding and and then we can get some outputs 
and part of the outputs, the first will be the equity cash flow. And then we can put DSCR, LLCR, PLCR. Okay, and we're going to be getting there, but there are going to be quite a there are going to be a few unfortunate videos here because because this is going to start to get to the hard part, the hard part where we uh, have some circular references and everything else. So I'm going to save this as we're going to call this solar project with. Uh, financing inputs okay and then uh, the next video let's just fill this in so that's taking too long it's 50 minutes just for that okay sorry about that <laughs>